congregation may be seated. I invite the baptismal party to come forward. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the apostle Peter has written, baptism now saved. The Word of God teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Henry Allen Stamp, receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved faithful Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan River of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and an abundant washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Henry according to your boundless mercy, and bless him with true faith in the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a living spirit and joyful hope, so that together with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors confess the Christian faith, as expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are witnesses to the baptism of those whom they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith. They are at all times to be examples for them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the name. Dirk and Amanda, David and Jenny, is it your intention to serve Henry as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, Yes, with the help of God. May God enable you to carry out this faithful and loving work. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. And they were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter. And he took them up in his arms, and laying his hands upon them, he blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Henry, the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Dear Christian sponsors, I now ask you to answer in the name and in the stead of this child the questions which I shall now address to him to confess what God works in him in and through holy baptism. Henry Allen Stan, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell, who on the third day rose again from the dead, who ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, who from thence will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, I believe. Will you be baptized into this Christian faith? Henry Allen Stamp, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your church and have granted Henry new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The mighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you always. Amen. You may be seated. We continue this evening, uh, continue our service with the salutation and collect. Uh, congregational, please rise. pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Epiphany is written in the first book of Samuel, the third chapter. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his, in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle reading, the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For, as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, 
Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, while you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. Suffered and was buried. And the 
In the name of Jesus, amen. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Such a simple command. Such a simple invitation. Follow me. And yet how profound knowing who it is that is asking and knowing what it means to follow Jesus. Philip has no idea what he's getting into. If you remember last Sunday, Uh, we heard about the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove, the voice of the Father proclaiming, this is my beloved Son. It is shortly after the baptism of Jesus that he begins his earthly ministry. He begins to proclaim the word of God publicly, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He calls sinners to repentance. He calls people, human beings, to follow him, to listen to him, to learn from him, and to believe and trust in him for forgiveness, life, and salvation. It is shortly after the baptism that Jesus calls the 12 disciples. We usually think of the word disciple as follower, but the word itself is, uh, it's actually closer to student or learner. The idea of learning from Jesus and Jesus uh, being their rabbi, their teacher. The one who teaches them, not the, not the subjects of the world, reading and writing and arithmetic, but teaching them about God, teaching them the word of God, teaching them who God is and what God has done for them, teaching them who he is and what he has come into the world to accomplish. The invitation to be a disciple, a follower, is not simply to listen and to learn, but also to believe and to put into practice what it is that Jesus says. It's not mere entertainment. It's not, as the world says today, just watch. Just sit there, don't do anything, just sit and watch and laugh and cry and whatever else you feel. But no, the calling of God, the calling of Jesus to his disciples is life-changing. It is life-altering. And ultimately, it is life-giving because of what our Lord Jesus has come into the world to give, to accomplish for his people. The call to discipleship is a call to repentance, to confess sins, to turn away from wickedness, to turn away from evil. It is a call to believe in God, to learn and to know and to trust who God is and what God has done. It includes the law, the command of God to love him and to love one another. And most importantly, it includes the gospel the proclamation of the forgiveness of sins 
the great gifts of life and salvation that Christ has come into the world to give. These disciples will follow Jesus. They will witness him, see and hear what he says and what he does. They will see him do miracles. They will see him feed the multitudes. They will see him cast out demons. They will see him heal the sick. They will see him walk on water. They will see him raise the dead. They will also see him suffer. They will see him arrested, convicted, beaten, persecuted, and ultimately killed upon the cross. And they will see him resurrected. They will see him alive three days after his death. They will eat with him and speak with him. They will see the nail marks in the hands and the feet. They will watch him ascend into heaven, but they will hear him promise the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon them in the day of Pentecost, their job description changes a little bit. They're no longer the uh, the disciples, but the apostles, the sent ones, the ambassadors for Jesus, the ones who go out into all the world and proclaim to everyone who will listen who Jesus is and what he has done. They become the teachers, gathering disciples to themselves, although not really disciples for themselves, but disciples of Jesus. Followers of Jesus, believers in Jesus, just as we are here today, 2,000 years later. When they first meet Jesus and he says, follow me, they have no idea that all these things lie ahead of them. Jesus knows but they themselves do not know. Now, in a manner of speaking, this could be said about all of us. And perhaps on this night, we're thinking specifically of young Henry, about three weeks old. Yeah. On this day, baptized adopted as a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, given the forgiveness of sins, given the great gifts of life and salvation, invited to pray, to call upon God as Father. On this night, Henry joins the ranks of the redeemed, the saved, the children of God, the church of all times and places. What will his life be like? What will happen to him in the days and weeks and months and years and decades to come? What journey for him is beginning on this day? We don't know. We have no idea. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But God knows. St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he does this in the context of warning them against sexual immorality. But he reminds them that the people of God belong to God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 
gee, that almost make us, makes us sound like slaves being bought with a price. But we remember as we confess in the catechism that this is the, the meaning of the word redemption. It is the great work of Christ for his people purchased and won us from sin and death and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, not with money, but with his holy and precious blood, with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. From this day forward, Henry and all the baptized, you belong to Christ. This is not slavery. This is not oppression. This is grace. This is a wonderful gift of God because it means that whatever happens in this life, no matter how long or short this life may be, no matter how much uh, joy and pleasure, no matter how much pain and suffering, we belong to Christ. We are his. And none of the evils of this world, not all the powers of the devil, can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so like the disciples of old, we hear the call, we answer the call, we heed the call to follow Jesus. Even as we gather here each week to hear his word, to receive his gifts, to learn again and again who God is and what God has done for us, to hear again and again the law that we ought to live our lives in love for God and in love for one another, to hear again and again the call to repentance, to turn away from our sins, and especially here. Consider how in, in our culture the idea that our bodies are our own. We decide who we are. We decide what our identity is. No one else, not even God, can tell us. Oh, and how this leads us into, uh, into great wickedness. How this leads us away from God. The call to repentance is a call to remember that God is our creator. That Christ is our Savior. That the Holy Spirit has sanctified us through the washing of water with the word of God. And that indeed we belong to him. And so also we gather week in and week out to hear the gospel. The forgiveness of sins, life and salvation that Christ has accomplished for us. That is given to us in the word and the sacraments that we have received in holy baptism, that we receive uh, in, the, in the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood, that we hear in the, the preaching of the gospel each week to remind us that we belong to God. We belong to Christ. He bought us with the price of his suffering and death and resurrection. May we therefore give glory to God, not only in our spirits, but also in our bodies as we live as the people of God in this world and in the life of the world to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Almighty and gracious God, Lord of the Church, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into the harvest field. Bestow upon us true teachers and ministers of your word. Grant that your true gospel may be freely and boldly proclaimed in this and in every place. Mercifully remember all those that you have created, even the enemies of your church, and grant them repentance unto life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Heavenly Father, grant your mercy and grace to your people in their many and various callings. Bless our public servants, our armed forces, law enforcement, and all those who protect us. Sustain them in courage and honor in defending our land. Bless our elected officials. Endow them with wisdom and integrity to uphold justice. Bless all people in their particular vocations. Prosper their work and allowing them to be a blessing unto others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, you continually bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance what is needed for the support of our lives. Grant us favorable weather and bless our labors, that the increase of plants and animals upon the earth may be harvested for the benefit of your people. Make us ever mindful of your blessings that we may return to you our praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit, and relieve your servants who are sick or suffering any distress of body or soul. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Give them comfort and confidence in you. 
Defend them from every danger to body and soul. Keep them in peace and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty and most merciful God, you bring us through suffering and death with our Lord Jesus Christ to enter with him into glory. We pray for the family of Donald Book, who has been called to rest. Grant us grace at all times to acknowledge and accept your holy and gracious will, to remain in the true faith, and to find peace and joy in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble and hearty thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness that you continually bestow upon us. We praise you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. We bless you for your boundless love and the redemption of the world through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your holy word and sacraments by which your spirit sustains our souls in the true faith, even in the darkness of this fallen world. We implore you that your grace and mercy may remain with your people all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good evening once again and welcome to all of you. Uh, we welcome Henry into the family of God. Uh, we welcome all of his family that has, uh, especially those that have traveled to be with us uh, to, uh, to celebrate uh, this uh, important sacrament. Uh, we pray God's continued blessing upon Henry uh, and his entire family all the days of their lives. Um, as mentioned in the prayers, Donald Book has passed away. Um, funeral arrangements are as follows, and they are listed in the bulletin. Uh, the visitation will be here Monday evening uh, from 4 until 8, uh, and then an hour of visitation Tuesday morning at 10 with the funeral service here uh, Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, a week from tomorrow, uh, next Sunday the 21st, is our annual voters meeting, uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, there is a paragraph in the bulletin uh, about all the, uh, all the usual annual business of the congregation uh, needing to be conducted. Um, there is a new group uh, in the congregation that is getting started. Uh, it is a, uh, a widow's group, uh, part Bible study, part support group. Uh, please read in the, uh, in the bulletin about that. They're, they're having their first meeting uh, on Thursday morning, January 18th, not here at the church, uh, but they're meeting uh, in public at Market on Main, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. If you have any, uh, any questions um, or would like to join or want more information, uh, please talk to Janice Cowell or Cheryl Sauerhag, and their phone numbers are, uh, are there in the bulletin. All right, are there any other announcements this evening? All right, have a good week.